In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate a weighted average. Now, a weighted average uh, in the case of a probability distribution uh, is also going to follow the same pattern. Uh, but for a weighted average in general, we don't need to uh, ensure that the um, proportions, that the weights that we're going to be calculating with are going to be adding up to one. So we can think of these as examples of maybe we have a score and we have weights. So an example of calculating a weighted average might be in a course you're taking where maybe you've got a couple of tests that are worth 20% of your grade, a final paper maybe, or a final exam that's worth 30% of your grade, and then maybe you have 15% for other things like quizzes or homework and the like. So in, in this case, because they're adding up to the whole course grade, then these will add up to 100% to, to one. But we're gonna show you how to calculate this regardless of whether or not these add up to one. And in fact, if you wanted to know what your average was before you get to the final, then they won't add up to one in that case. Um, but the procedure is basically the same. So in order to calculate a weighted average, the general idea is that you're going to multiply the score, or the, the value, by the probability or the proportion, the weight, and then add all of those up, and then divide by the sum of the weights. So multiply the score by the weights, the corresponding weights, and then divide by the sum of the weights. Those are our two main steps. Okay, so let's calculate our weighted average. So the score times the weight, and I'm gonna do this sort of multiply it out for you uh, in stages so you can see what's going on. And then we will show you how to do it more quickly with a single Excel function. So the score times the weight, we're going to take the score times the weight. And then we're going to add of all of these up. And then we're going to calculate the sum of the scores times the weights. which is going to be the sum of these guys. And then we're going to calculate the sum of just the weights, which is the sum of all of these guys. Oh, I didn't do that right. I have to add them. Sum of all the weights. There we go. And then finally, the weighted average is the ratio of the sum of the scores times the weights divided by the sum of the weights. So here, the sum of the weights is one. And so we got the same as the scores times the weights. But again, that's not necessarily so. Uh, for instance, if I had represented these as percentages, 15, 15, 20, 20, and uh, 30, then the sum would have been 100. And then I would still have had to divide by the 100. Now, let's consider the scenario where maybe I don't have the final exam. before taking the final. What is the average before I take the final? Well, I can still calculate that. I just leave this guy out, but the sum of the scores times the weights, um, they're gonna add up to a smaller value and the sum of the weights is not gonna be equal to one. And so then you'll see a transformation when I do the division. 
So let's recalculate. And I'll copy this down here just so that we can see it without this final value in here. So the steps are still going to be the same. We're still going to do the score times the weights, which is going to be the score times the weight. And I'm going to do that for whatever values I have, test one, test two, the homework and quizzes. And then I'm going to calculate the sum of the scores times the weights. which is equal to the sum of these guys and the sum of the weights is going to be the sum of the weights, which now no longer adds up to one, no longer adds up to 100%. And so the weighted average before taking the final is this number divided by the B17 number, which I can't see. And I get 77.6. So my final exam score in this case, it helped my average go up a little because it was slightly higher than my average prior to taking the final. So again, this is a procedure that we can use for calculating the weighted average. Now, how would I do this in Excel without doing all these intermediate steps? Well, let's do this one more time. Now, the fast way to do this is to go directly to the weighted average. And the formula that we're gonna use is called the sum product. And the sum product, basically, it's going to take a list of values and then a list, another list of values that's exactly the same size. And it's going to multiply the two corresponding values together in the two sets or three sets, if you have that many, but in our case, in two sets. And then it's going to add them up. So the product is the multiplication step, corresponding elements, and then the sum is to add them up. And so if I take the top line, which are all my scores, and then I put in a comma, and then in the weights, I take the bottom line and I close my parentheses. I'm going to get the result that I got right here, which I got after doing the multiplication of the scores times the weights and then adding them up. And that's exactly what this step did. Now, in this case, I got the weighted average just by doing the sum product because my weights added up to one. But if that's not the case, I can then divide by the sum of the weights. And then that additional component, and again, it's already in parentheses, so it's just one thing in the denominator. I don't need an extra set around the sum. Um, that will, if the weights don't add up to one, then that will do the, the, the dividing by the weights component. And since this is one, then I got the same value. But this is how we would calculate a weighted average. Now, when else might you need to calculate a weighted average? Well, if you do a, uh, an estimate of an average from a histogram, essentially, you are also doing a weighted average. You're calculating the weights are the height of your bars and the values, the scores equivalent is essentially the middle point of each histogram bar. Uh, so that's one way to estimate the mean from a histogram. Uh, essentially, you're doing a weighted average. You're doing the weight, how tall the bar is, by the value at the middle of that bar. And so that would not be a case where everything adds up to one. Um, and so you would have to um, use the divide by the sum component. 